This time we're able to register a user. Now we're going to set up JWT authentication. We can also log in a user. To do that, we are going to start by installing a package called PyJWT. So pipenv install PyJWT. Okay, so as it, as it installs, I'm going to come here in our views. We need to set up our login API view. So right here, create a class. So it's gonna be login view. And it's also going to inherit from generic API view. So generic API view. So here, the login will basically be a post request. So we can handle a post request. So def post. You already know it takes in a, re a self and request and in the request we get the user data so over here you basically want to get the user information so you can do data equals request dot data and now to get the username we do username now since this is a dictionary you can get it from dot get username and then i'm going to add a fallback which will be an empty string then the next thing is gonna be the password. So let me add password here. So it's gonna be data.get password. Okay, so that will give us our data. Now we basically need to do what? We need to authenticate with our backend. So before we even get there, right now I'm gonna add a pass here, but let's first set up JWT authentication so that when we authenticate, we can be able to get the token. So right here in the application, I'm going to set up another file to basically handle the JWT authentication. So I'm going to call it backends.py. Okay, so since we've already installed PyJWT, I'm going to start by importing it. So import PyJWT. Actually, so import JWT. You can directly import it as JWT. And then we need to import something called authentication. So from REST framework, import authentication so this is what will help us to compose our authentication class and then make it be the one to use across the application right here we need to create a class so class i'm gonna call it jwt authentication and now for us to be able to set up an authentication scheme we need to inherit from authentication base authentication okay so in here we basically need to do one mandatory thing and that is to override a method called authenticate okay so here in authenticate we can do all our logic and then determine if django rest framework should authenticate this user or not so here first thing we're going to need to do is get the, the headers that the user is sending where they will be sending the token so right now i'm gonna put something like auth data so this is gonna be equal to authentication then we call get authorization header and then this of course takes in the request so this basically on every request that we map to be to need the user to authenticate it's going to take in this request and then the request is going to come over here and then now we can handle it so down here now we can first check if the user is not supplying auth data so you can do if you not auth data so if they are not supplying the data we don't want to do nothing so return none. So basically we don't want to check this before. We don't want to check this when it's not there. Okay, so once it's there, then we basically need to get the user information. So the way it, it works is, for example, here in Postman, if we are sending a post request to maybe, a, and we want to supply a token, we are going to need to come here to bear a token, and then we supply a token like this. So I hope you see it. So the way now this will come to the server, it's going to come prefixed with the keyword bearer and then the token here. So just get those. So here I'm going to set up a prefix. So the prefix, I'm also going to, to get the token. So this is going to equal to of data dot decode. Then this pass UTF8. And then we need to split it by the space. Okay, so basically what this is doing is when you send the data over a network, it's gonna come in, in a bytes format. So this basically will decode it into like a string 
the string format or the native Python format, the native Python format, the native the native formats that Python can understand. So when we split by space, that means the token is going to be in the second index and then the prefix is going to be in the first index, which will be zero or one. All right, so here, now we can do our magic. We can try to validate the token. So we have already imported by JWT. So here, I'm going to add a try catch, try accept block. So in the try, I'm going to try to get the payload. So payload equals JWT with decode. So here we need to decode this token that the user will be providing. And then while decoding, we need to have some secret information. So this is the information we're going to use to sign the, the key and then be able to, to unsign it, basically decode it and tell that it was generated by us and it's still authentic. Okay, good. So here, now we need to pass like a separate key. So I'm going to set up a secret key. So here I'm going to import settings so from Django.conf import settings. Okay, so in settings in the settings, I'm gonna add it there. So let me first bring it here. I'm gonna call it secret key. Actually, I'm gonna call it JWT secret key because we also have the app secret key. Secret key. Okay, so we need to also set it up. So let me set it up a bit. So in settings of our application, which is here. So anywhere in the application, gonna go up to here, add a comment, say jot. I'm gonna add secret key. This is gonna be, since this is like confidential information, we don't want to expose it to like GitHub or Git. So what we do is we use the OS module, Varn to get. So we are going to get JWT secret. So this is going to look in our environment variables and try to get this one. So let's set it up. So here in the application, we need to create a data file. So we don't want to push code to GitHub and then our secrets are leaking. They won't be secrets anymore, right? <laughs> so set up a dot env. And then here, you need to write export. Then the key equals the value. So the secret key can actually be anything. So just set that and then just immediately set up a dot git ignore just so we don't forget. And then let's enter the dot env. So of course we can be sure that it won't, it won't leak, at least in version control. All right, so coming back to our backends. So right here, now when we try to decode, when a token like can't be decoded, let's say user has tampered with it, it's going to throw an error and that's going to be in JWT with decode error. So once we get this, basically we want to raise an exception and tell the user that the token is invalid. So here, instead of passing, we raise, so we raise an exception. So I'm going to import exceptions from REST framework, which I think you can get from here. So raise exceptions. Then we want to raise authentication failed because yes, the authentication has failed. Okay, so here we can pass like the detail, which should be your token is invalid. Still them to log in. And then, so this catches when the token is invalid, but what about when it has expired? So we basically do the same thing. So here, and then we pass another one called signature expired, I believe. So yeah, it's called expired signature error. Okay, so once you have that, now this is gonna be like expired, so you can change the message a bit. So token is expired. Okay, so once you have this, now, now here in the try, so if we're able to decode it, which we do with the decode, then the secret key, then we should be able to get like some information. So when we are going to encode, we're going to add a username in that payload. So here we can do something like user equals user. I'm going to import user there. Then we need to call objects to get. And now we are, need, we are going to need to get by the username. So the username is going to be payload and then a key called username. So you can be rest assured that if it fail, if the checks fail, then it's going to be caught by these, these two. Okay, so let's import chooser so from Django. Let's contrib. Let's auth models. 
and port user. Okay, so once we have that now, right here, now we can return return the user with, to the authentication class. So here, you can do return. Then you want to return a user and also the token. Okay, so now that we have set up our authentication scheme, we need to make the Django REST framework basically use that for all its authentication purposes. Okay, so navigate to the, the settings py file. So anywhere here, we should be able to set up a key called REST underscore framework. So here, basically here we define everything, every configuration that has every configuration that's specific to the REST framework. So now we are going to define default authentication classes. Okay, so this is gonna be our class for now. So this is in authentication dot backends. And then the class is called, let's check on it one more time. Where is it? Backends. So it's called JWT authentication. So here in the settings, where are you? Bring it in like that. And now if we come back to our view, let's complete up this game. So we need to encode the token before we send a response back to the user. So here I'm going to import the settings so from Django conf import settings right here now we need to authenticate so right user equals we also need to bring in authenticate just so we can authenticate with our Django so from Django dot contrib contrib import auth so here now when we have the username and password basically what we want to do is run auth with authenticate and auth authenticate basically takes in the credentials so you can supply username and password so username equals the username and then the password equals the password that we already have so once this match with match a record in the database that's going to return for us a user so here we can check if we have a user so if user so if you have a user now we need to generate a token for them so generate a token Let's call it auth underscore token. And now this is gonna be JWT, which we haven't imported. So import jot. So down here, we can do jot, encode. So we want to encode some information. So now that we have a user, let's encode their username. So here we need to give it a dictionary of what we want to encode. So it's gonna be username, and this is going to be user dot username. And here you can add all the other information that you want to keep passing around uh, around your application. Okay, so the second parameter is a secret key, which you can get from settings. Dot secret key. Actually, we call it JWT secret. JWT secret. I believe key. Let's cross check on that. So here. Okay, it's correct here so here oh this also check here it's correct all right so now that will give us the token so we need to now send a response to a user so right here so when you have like a user instance for us to be able to send it back as JSON we need to serialize it at first so now when you look at our serializers and this user serializer, you can see that what we have in the fields are basically a good candidate of the responses we need to be sending. So we, we already know that password will be read write only, so it won't be shown back. So now here in the views, we can now just construct a data key. So this is gonna be it's gonna be a dictionary. So here we need to add the user. So we need to add a user key, and then the value is going to be is going to be basically the data from the serializer. So let's first get that. So serializer data. 
is uh, underscore so serializer so now we can set this one to our serializer which is user serializer and then we give it the, the instance so the instance we have now is user and then it's going to know how to transform it so if you ever want to like serialize more than one instance never forget to pass many equals true so if you have more than one you need to pass many equals true so but now that you have one we can keep on the user yeah just want to throw that in there so it can always be helpful in the future so now we need to send serializer to data so this is going to basically come here and map this instance to, to those fields and then return for us some data we can work with okay so this is good another thing we need to do is set our token so we can add a key called token so now the token here we need it's going to be the token that we've signed here okay so add token key what are we doing wrong okay i get it so this should be double quotes if we just use double quotes it should be consistent everywhere actually let me use single quote even here oh this should be a full column this is going to handle the login and then sending the token and when a user is not authenticated or when he fails to authenticate here now we also need to send them a response so so right outside here you actually put a comment here send res so outside we need to return a, something to the user so here we can do return response and now here the response basically will be we can de we can define what we want to send them so here let's set up a dictionary so the key is going to be detail and then the value is going to be something like invariant credentials and then since this is an authentication error, we need to send a status. So pass status, then set it to status dot four oh one. So this is gonna be HTTP four oh one unauthorized. All right. So once we have this, let's also send the authenticated user information. So I'm gonna copy this actually. Bring it over here. So we are returning a response and of course we are not sending this so here we want to send this data and then the, the code will be 200 so it's be just going to be http 200 okay all right so let's run our application and test what we have so coming back to postman Oh, sorry guys, we, we didn't register our view to our URL, so let's do that real quick. Support it. Let's bring it in. Add the comma here. All right, so now, let's retry it. So login. So if we try to login, not found. Okay, so this is register, sorry. So supply, add login there, try again. So we, we are getting an error. So let's let's try to inspect and see. Type object is not iterable. Okay, so let's look at our settings.py again. Okay, so authentication class is basically, it should be a tuple, so not a string just. So, so here, remember to add like a comma. So run again. So now if you come back and send, you can see that it logs in and then it sends us a token. Okay, good. So now we can use this token to access all the other endpoints and it's JWT. Yeah, so this is good. This is all that we wanted. I'm gonna be pausing the video here. If the video helped you in one way or the other, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for new for future videos. I'll see you in the next one.